beneath the serenity of the Potomac River, an invasive predator is growing in number, a threat to native fish, their habitats, and the ecosystem, the blue catfish. When I originally fished for catfish, we didn't have these blues around. They live for 20 years, grow to over 100 pounds, and they're the apex predator in the bay. They eat everything, nothing eats them. Well, that is until they're caught. The key to keeping these gilled gluttons in check could mean convincing Maryland seafood lovers to make room for them on their plates. It's a really win-win-win for everyone. And the biggest winners would be the native species of the Chesapeake Bay. Today, as fisherman Jamie Bowling and his son Sam trot line for blue catfish on the river in Charles County, they have a visitor, congressional seafood owner Tim Sugaru. For the past four years, all the catfish they've caught have gone to Congressional, where they're marketed and sold. Most of our customers never sold catfish before. The fishermen didn't have market for it, and they didn't fish for it. It's hard to say just how many blue catfish are in the region, but fishery experts agree they're abundant, and their numbers keep climbing. As a former research biologist for the Maryland DNR, it hit home pretty hard the fact that these fish have grown from just a few thousand fingerlings to over, some estimates, are over a hundred million fish in the bay today. The blue catfish is native to the Mississippi, Ohio, and Missouri River basins. In the 1970s, it was introduced to the Chesapeake Bay watershed by way of the James River in Virginia for sport fishing. In the rivers like the James where they were first put in, it's virtually 99% wild blue cats. Now, the challenge is figuring out how to contain them. And catching the fish is only part of the solution. The other half of the battle is getting people to eat them. People say, I've had catfish before, I don't like it. And I say to them, You've never had this catfish before. Once the fish arrive at Congressional Seafood in Jessup, they make their way to the processing room. Today, employees will fillet about 5,000 pounds of catfish, all by hand. The fillet itself is very beautiful. It's a firm, white, flaky, mild fish. It's nothing like a farm-raised fish. I mean, they eat menhaden, they eat blue crabs. They eat juvenile rock, they eat adult rock, they eat shad, herring, white perch, yellow perch, freshwater mussels, they're an omnivore. And while their insatiable appetite is bad for the aquatic ecosystem, it does give them a nice flavor. You can see that their mouth can swallow other fish whole. That's the reason why they take over ecosystems. And their vacuum-like mouth isn't the only thing that makes them top predators. They have these three weapons on them. These are spines, and they're basically a bone. They're very hard. They're tipped with poison. That's why no other fish can really eat them. But once they're filleted, skinned, trimmed, and packed, they're ready for customers to enjoy. We sell to restaurants and to retailers. One of the first restaurants to include blue catfish on its menu was the Hamilton in Washington, D.C. We put it on as a special in April of 2014, and in that month alone, we sold 15,000 orders of the entree and 12,000 orders of the sandwich. And it's been a staple on our menus ever since. It's time to fill another order. Head chef Zach Smith is preparing blackened blue catfish. It really takes on the flavor profile of those fish that it eats, and you get a much cleaner, a more firm textured, white-fleshed catfish than you normally would from farm-raised or wild-caught. And this is one of their most popular dishes. It's delicious, you get the blackening, lots of flavor from the jambalaya, and it helps the local environment, which people really seem to get behind. 